Bless you, amen. We, we acknowledge that, that regardless of what life brings our way, God is still our God. Amen. And I'm sure we all can testify to the goodness of God, of how God has kept us in spite of us. Amen. We hadn't always been right, done right, and tried to do right, but yet God has all still been good to us. Amen. Even when we're still in those ink pens and things like that, preacher, God is still good to us. Amen. And I know I can testify to say that even though I've been in church for a while, I still ain't got it all together. And I need God to continue to have mercy on me. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to uh, pause again and thank everyone on, for what you did for us on last um, Sunday. Amen. Last weekend, rather. Amen. It was such a blessing. Um, and we thank you again for showing the love and the support that you've always shown, but to a greater degree, amen. Uh, uh, last week, I, I believe, was the best anniversary we've ever had, amen. <laughs> amen from us, amen. That's from our hearts, amen. So we thank God for all of your efforts, amen, and being a blessing to us. Um, today, I want to share, amen, a, a, a encouraging word uh, for us. Uh, today because uh, it has been revealed that even though we look like everything all right, some of us going through some things. And God wants you to know that <laughs> what's coming is greater than what you've lost. I say God wants you to know that what's coming is greater than what you've lost. Sometimes we can focus too much on the things that we've lost and not realizing that God had to allow that to be removed to make room for the greater. And today I want you to leave here with a smile on your face, not worried about the things that you no longer have, the folk that are no longer in your life. Are y'all still with me? Because we had to lose some things to gain some things. And God hasn't forgot because it, every time God takes a thing away, he doesn't necessarily replace it right then. Amen, somebody. You see, one of the biggest things that come against us is, is we lose hope too soon. See, when we lose things, we're not supposed to lose hope, ain't that? But oftentimes when, we, when God allows the enemy to take some things from us, we lose hope, and when we lose hope, it shows God we're not ready. Oh, somebody, I'm trying to help somebody right quick. I ain't going to be long. I ain't going to be long today, but we got to learn not to lose hope just because we lost something. Are y'all still with me? Because our hope is not in stuff. Come on, somebody. Our hope is not in things. My hope is not in others. My hope is in the Lord. And he said he'd never leave me nor forsake me. Are y'all still with me? So when I lose something, I got to always remember that God must have something better for me. Now let's look at our example, Job. Job, the 42nd chapter in verse number 10. Let's look at the example that God has given us in Job. And, 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 me, and to be honest with you, those of us that are familiar with the story of Job, we ain't got it half as bad as Job had. Come on, somebody. We ain't near about suffering the way Job suffered. Come on, somebody. And he suffered without cause. Just listen to me. And sometimes when we suffer, we deserve. Oh, come on, somebody. We deserve to suffer for what we've done, but Job suffered without a cause, and yet we're going to find out why he was really blessed. Job 42, verse number 10. And I'm going to read it from the Message Bible. It says, after Job had interceded for his friends, the same friends that had told him he was... <laughs> 
same friends that came by and said, man, you done done something, man. You done seen Job. Come clean. The same friends that tried to put him down, he said, after Job had interceded for his friends, God restored his fortune. And then, come on somebody, doubled it. All his brothers and sisters and friends came to his house. Now, y'all know this is a new house, right? <laughs> and celebrated. They told him how sorry they were and consoled him for all the trouble God had brought him. Each of them brought generous housewoman gifts. God blessed Job's later life even more than his earlier life. Y'all see that? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of a life-changing King Jesus Christ. What's coming? Come on, you got, you got to have some hope. What's coming? Oh, you might not, I might not be clean now. But just wait. Come on, somebody. I might not be riding good now. But what's coming is greater than what I've lost. <sighs> Life is about gaining and losing. We begin to lose things at an early age. I remember when I was very young, I even remember when I lost my first tooth. Are y'all still with me? <laughs> And, and when I lost that tooth, you know, I was like, what's going on? You know, I didn't understand that I had to lose tooth, that tooth. Are y'all with me? When I, right on, when I went to the dentist, started going to the dentist, the dentist explained to me that I had to lose these baby teeth. That's what they call it. Yeah, they, call they call them the baby teeth, right? And they got to fall out. And if they don't fall out, the permanent teeth can't come in. Are y'all still with me? So uh, while I'm messed up about losing the baby teeth, are y'all still with me? I'm not realizing that I had to lose them to get the permanent teeth. See, sometimes we got to realize that some blessings in your life, they're not permanent. They're just temporary. They're just to help you to get by until God releases the permanent blessing. Now, the permanent blessings is the one that's going to stick with you. Amen, somebody. See, some of us are messed up because we chose some friends. They didn't choose us. We chose them. You said this, my ace. They never said that. You said this, my boy. You said this, my homegirl. You said this, my rat or die. They ain't never said that. And then along the way, you mess around and find out that they not really what you proclaim them to be. Now you in your feelings. But what you fail to realize is that they were just temporary. They were just there for the time being. Come on, somebody. But one day God going to give you the permanent friend. This is the one that the Bible says that stick closer than a are y'all still with me? So when you get the permanent, when the permanent comes in and said in, you ain't got to worry about losing them. Oh, come on, somebody. So some of the people that we've lost in our lives, you were meant, you were meant to lose them. It was purpose that you lose them. Because if you never lost them, you never would open the door. Oh, come on, somebody. You wouldn't even have room for the real friend that God's going to put in your life. Because you still be wrapped up and tied up in the temporary stuff. So we need to learn how to say, say la. That means see you. <laughs> wouldn't want to be you. Huh? Come on, somebody. <laughs> so sometimes our losses are really disgusting. They're really gains, but we can't see them as gain yet because we're looking for God to take it and replace it. But see, he can't do it like that. My wife likes watching these shows, and I do too. 
think, I think they're very interesting because of my background. I used to be in architecture and design and stuff like that. And she liked to watch these shows um, where they come in and take the old house and they, 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 they make it anew. Y'all see what I'm talking about? And I'd be amazed sometimes of how they can take the old house and make it look better than it did when it was first built. Are y'all with me? But it take time. It just don't happen overnight. It take them coming in, knocking out walls, taking off the roof, taking windows out, all this kind of stuff. And for a while, it looks pretty raggedy. And you'd be like, well, I don't see how, they go, how this going to look. You understand what I'm saying? But as time goes on and as they keep working on it, little by little, it becomes to come together. And after a while, it is more beautiful than it was when it was first. This is what God says. God even said, he said, he said, what? The, the, the latter house is going to be greater than the former. Are y'all still with me? There's, some, there's a season in your life that's to come that can't even compare to where you are. And the fact that you can't see it is the reason God said we must have faith. Mother, and this is what separates us from the world. Come on, somebody. Because the world, they can, they can, they can look nice too. They can have nice homes. They can have nice cars. They can have all these things. But the only thing that separates us from them is that we have faith. See, when you don't have faith, when you lose stuff, now you'll lose your mind. Oh, come on, somebody. You'll lose your hope. You'll lose every. You'll lose your confidence. You'll lose your job, and you'll be like, it's all of what I'm going to do. No, your faith, my faith is not in the job. My faith is in him, who is the author and the finisher. See, the author and the finisher. The author and the finisher. Somebody say, I ain't made it to the finish yet. So I got some more stuff coming. The book is still being written. It's coming. And though it tarry, as the Bible said, though it don't come when you expect it, don't mean it's not coming. We've lost friends. And the Bible says we should rejoice. It says we should rejoice when, when people speak evil of us and throw us away. He said rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward. Are y'all still with me? When men revile you and say all manner evil against you. When your friends stab you in your back. Rejoice. We've all lost love. Anybody you ever heard the phrase, no love lost? Anybody ever said that before? I know I don't say it in many times. Well, somebody do me wrong. No love lost. What a f that's a lie, because the fact that you said that really proves that you done lost some love for that person. Oh, y'all ain't got to Come on, somebody. Come on, keep it real with me. The fact that you said that it's proof that you done lost some love and respect for that person, for what they did. Are y'all still with me? But even when we lose love, you know what? Love is something that I've experienced that even when you lose it, it can come back greater than when you lost. Sometimes you think, oh, man, I can't never forgive or I can't never love a person for that again. But you, the devil lives a lot. You can. In a relation, I know I can speak to you in my, in my marriage. There's been time when I know in my relationship that we've lost love and trust for one another because of some things that happened in our relationship. So we lost some love and we lost some trust. But as time goes on, ain't back, all that love, all that trust that we lost, it came back. And then it just didn't come back to where it was. It's even greater. Are y'all still with me now? So the love and trust I have for my wife 
even though we went through some things that allowed that to be, you know, crushed and, and hurt at times, it's even greater now than it ever was. Because sometimes when you, you have to go through some things to appreciate some things. Oh, come on, somebody. You see, this is why young people really can't appreciate much. Man, y'all better hear what I'm saying. Because, see, I, I, I'm, I'm a little older now. I ain't old, like David said. I'm a little older. But yet I have been young. <laughs> Are y'all still with me? And I remember when I really didn't, couldn't appreciate nothing. Because I ain't had to suffer nothing. Everything I got, mom and daddy got for me. Are y'all still with me? Even the first ride I had, they gave me a ride, put insurance on it, gave me gas money. Are y'all still with me? And I couldn't appreciate it. Oh, but when I got older, and I learned that, I, that, that, that ain't nothing free. Come on, somebody. You learn to appreciate things. Appreciate them. For everybody that's lost a job, that next one, you appreciated it the more. Come on, somebody. <laughs> See, when you lose something, the next time God restores it, you appreciate it more. And sometimes God does it specifically so you can learn how to appreciate stuff. I, I, I heard a, many brothers' testimony. He had a good wife. And he didn't appreciate it, appreciate her, and God took her from it. Are y'all still with me? But the next one God allowed him to get, he appreciated it. And he took care of her. Are y'all still with me? And sometimes God does this. He has to do it because he has to get you to a place of appreciation before he can bless you. Because God is not going to allow anything or anybody steal his glory. Y'all, y'all, y'all missed that. If God is not going to bless you, if he ain't going to get the glory out of blessing you. And if you can't alert, if you don't, can't appreciate nothing, then God is not going to bless you. And how do you know, how does God know you appreciate him and what all he does is that even though you slay me, as Job said. Oh, man, I wish I had. Even though you took my job, even though I lost my car, even though my woman don't love me, no, even though, yet, come on, somebody, you will I worship you. Some of us in here right now, the car won't start, we won't get to church. You ain't always had a car. You done had to use these two right here, folks. Well, you done had to hitchhike, call somebody for a ride. Or, come on, somebody. You know why Job really was blessed the more? Because the scripture says that in all his sufferings, he didn't lose his integrity. He didn't let what he lost change him. Come on, somebody. He understood that he wasn't, his stuff didn't make him who he was. So even though he lost everything that he had, he didn't lose his integrity. He didn't lose who he really was. His wife came to him, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't want to preach too long. The service kind of long. The wife came to him and said, look, why are you still hanging on to your integrity? That's all he had left. His wife realized that. His wife knew. Come on, somebody. You want to know where, where a man at? Ask his wife. Come on, somebody. <laughs> his wife knew where he was at. She said, Job, we ain't got nothing but your integrity, man. 
Everything is gone. All you got is your integrity. Why don't you just cuss God and die so I can go and get another husband or whatever? That's all you got is your integrity. She was testifying that Job was still a good godly man, even though he had lost everything. And because he kept his integrity. Are y'all still with me? Uh, uh, can, can you say you can still be the same if God took it all away? Come on now, look at yourself. Don't look at Job now. Look at yourself. If, if God took everything. Uh, uh, no, we can run around, you know, speaking in tongues. Hallelujah, pray the Lord. Spiritual prayer warriors and all that. But if God actually came and just give it all to me. Lord, don't trap me. Somebody say, Lord, don't trap me. Lord, don't, Lord, don't trap me. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Let's stop complaining about stuff that's, that's in the past. It's gone, you know. It's gone for whatever reason. Maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's because something you did, or maybe it's because God allowed the devil to take something. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Let's keep looking forward. Come on, somebody. Let's keep looking toward the hills from which cometh our help. Are y'all with me? Because to be honest, if you really think think back on it, if you really think on it, some of the stuff we didn't deserve anyway. And some of the stuff was keeping us, was being a hindrance to us. So we, 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 we got to be careful how we pray. We pray, God, God, I want to get to a higher place. I want to get to a, a more blessed place. Well, sometimes in order to get you to that more blessed place, God has to diminish some things and even decrease some things and even take some things. So be careful what you ask for. Knowing and don't man be certain to know that when you say God do it, you're giving him permission to do whatever, whenever, however, whenever, whatever. Whoever said however you see fit, whoever prayed that prayer, however you see fit, Lord. Even if you just don't repeat it what somebody else said. Sound good. However you see fit, Lord. It'll be all right with me. Are you sure? Let me close. <sighs> hey, God, too. Verse number one. And I'm closing with this scripture. Hey, Zach, two. Hey, God, two, verse number one. And my iPad just decides to go off by itself, start all up all over again. I must got a new iPad coming. <laughs> Are y'all with me? I must have a new one, a brand new one. This one kind of old. This is an iPad too. They got like three or four more versions since this one. Amen, somebody. <laughs> hey, God, too. Beginning with verse number. Number one. So, media minister, y'all going to have to help me out. On the 21st day of the seventh month of the word of God came through to the prophet Haggai. Tell a governor of Zerubbabel, son of Shelaltal, and high priest Joshua, son of Jehozadak, and all the people. Somebody say, God talking to all of us. Is there anyone here who saw the temple the way it used to be? 
Somebody say you have to look back sometime. <laughs> yeah, you have to look back on, on where you used to live, how you used to live. Amen, somebody. We're quick to forget how God has blessed us and increased us. Amen. We don't have everything we want, but we got a whole lot more than we used to have. We're we living a whole lot better than we used to live. We're riding a whole lot better than we used to drive. Come on now. Amen. What verse is that? Verse 3. Who is left among you that saw the house is of first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in the comparison of it, uh, of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts, according to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. God said, look, I made a promise to you when I saved your soul. Listen. And don't forget that God said, I come that you may have life and that you may have it, what? More abundantly. That word more is key. I don't care what you got now, because if you stay in Christ, you're going to always receive what? More. Because he come that you may have life and what? Have it what? More abundantly. Amen. So even though if I don't have it now, I got to remember the promise that he's going to keep giving me what? And, and, and. So until your more come, you just deal with what you got. And thank God for what you because yeah. somebody ain't got what you got. I don't care how little you got. Somebody still don't have what you got. And I read where God takes stuff from one person and give it to the next. He even take from the one that got a little and give it to the one that got a lot. Obviously because the one that had the little didn't know what to do with it and didn't appreciate it. Whew. Don't let that be you. Because as much as I'd hate for God to take it from you and give it to me, I got no, that's none of my business. Did y'all hear what I just said? As much as I would hate for God to take what's yours and give it to me, that still would be none of my business. And I'd have to receive it. Do you know that when you leave here, somebody going to drive the car that you driving now? Wear the clothes you got on? So let's not get caught up and believing that our blessings are tied to tangible things, things that we can see and hold, drive, and put our hands on. No, 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 no. That's not what a true blessing is. That's, that's this man. The true blessing, the real blessing is having peace. To having love, joy. Are you with me, preacher? Because they're folk that got money and, and just as miserable as they can be. They got nobody to share it with. Come on, somebody. Huh? So we want God, we want more spiritual blessings than this physical stuff because this physical stuff is going to burn. It's going to go away. It's just temporary. And a lot of times, and some of us are here, we're talking about what God in the scripture is talking about making the latter house better than the former house. Some of us in here now wish our house was the way it was. Man. Oh, I wish 
I wish the, the peace and the love was in my house the way it was. I ain't God, I, you ain't even got to do nothing greater. I just wish it could be the way it was. The way I could come home, wanted to come home, have peace at home. You ain't got to say amen. I know you don't want to say amen. Let nobody know your house kind of shaky right now. I know, I know, I know. I know. But you remember a time when, man, things was good. Things was lovely. Are y'all still with me? Huh? Seemed like the pillow felt good all the time. That wasn't a pillow. Man, y'all better hear what I'm saying. It was not the pillow. It is not that mattress. <laughs> it ain't the mattress. I don't care how much you pay for it. It ain't the mattress. It's the peace of God. He said, now to give you the peace that don't make sense, the crazy kind of peace. See, that's the kind of peace that he want to give us. Well, don't make no difference whether you got enough money to buy a steak or just a bologna sandwich. Man, you still got peace, and, and it don't make no difference. We're sitting around here worried about how we're going to pay these bills. They ain't my bills. The Lord said he's going to take care of me, so these are the Lord's bills. And I'm going to go to sleep because the Lord going to take care of tomorrow. Somebody over here said, it is. <sighs> well, man, five, man. Verse six, for thus says the Lord of hosts, yes, once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Somebody said, sometime God come in your house and he shakes things up. Come to your house and he shake things up. And I will shake all nations and desire all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is what? Mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. Who said it? The Lord said it. And if the Lord said it, all we're supposed to do is believe it. And if we believe it, the scriptures declare that we will receive it. So if you're not receiving, then you might need to look at your faith. See where your faith lies. And in this place will I give Am I understanding the right verse? Verse 9. And in this place will I give what? <sighs> Not only is he going to bless the house and make it better than it was, but it's going to have peace. Do you know what that word peace really entitles? It means wherever there's peace, the enemy can't come. He, he can't even, come on somebody, because he can't understand. It's like light and darkness. It's like, come on somebody, he can't comprehend it. it he, can't, he can't be in the same place where there's peace. So God going to bless your house. He's going to set you up right. He's going to give you peace Whew. that you can't put a price on, that you couldn't pay for. If you had all the money in the world, you still couldn't pay for it. Where my, where my scripture at? I done lost my scripture. Look. Verse 10, and in the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, in the second year, are y'all still with me? In the second year, some, some God got an appointed time. Yeah, I, I, if you just take time and just really look at what the scripture says, God has an appointed time for things. And it don't work with your schedule, but just know when God get ready, when, when the time comes that he has appointed, it don't make no difference where you at, who around you, it, it's going to come. It's going to happen. Came the, 
came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts ask now the priest concerning the law saying if one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment and with his skirt doth touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat shall it be holy and the priest answered and said no then said Haggai if one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these shall it be unclean and the priest answered and said it shall be unclean then answered Haggai and said, So is this people, and so is this nation before me, says the Lord, and so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is unclean. And now I pray you consider from this day and upward from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord, since those days were when one came to a heap of twenty measures, there were but ten. When one came to the press fat for the, to draw out 50 vessels out of the press, there were but 20. I smote you with blasting and with mildew and with the hail and all the labors of your hands, yet ye turn not to me, saith the Lord. Consider now from this day and upward, from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree have not brought forth from this day, will I bless you. And again, the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heaven and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of the kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heaven. And I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. And the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Sheltai, saith the Lord, and I will make thee a signet. Y'all see that word signet? That's what I want to get to in close. That word signet is a sign. That's where we get the word sign from. He said, I'm going to make you a sign. What is a sign used for? A sign is used to display. Come on, somebody. Appetize. Are y'all with me? Come on, somebody. To let people know when they've arrived. Are y'all still with me? When you, when you go to Walmart, how you really know you at Walmart? You see the big sign out there, don't you? Say, Walmart. I'm at Walmart. Why? Because the sign said, this Walmart. Are y'all with me? God said, I'm going to make you a sign. I'm going to use your life to show other people, come on somebody, that I'm able to do any and all things. Are y'all with me? So sometimes when God takes stuff, he's using you as a sign. Come on somebody, he's using you as a symbol. He needs somebody to know how to act when they lose stuff. Y'all missed that, didn't you? You see, sometimes when he takes things from us, he needs our children to learn how to do without. Y'all don't quit listening to me. Let me sit down. Y'all, 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 somewhere else. Y'all let double quick or somewhere. <laughs> see, everything ain't all about you. And when you say, use me, Lord, you better be careful saying, use me. Any way you want to, Lord, use me. He'll do just that. He'll make an example out of you. And being an example ain't always a cushy job. Ooh, man. It ain't always howdy howdy, as they say. <sighs> this message today, in my conclusion, is that even though you've lost a lot of things and, and, and some stuff you've even forgotten about and good. But everything that you've lost have set you up for something better. If you were to just sit down, just take your time and look back on some things that you lost, you'll find out that every time you lost something, it may have been months or it could have been years later, God replaced it with something better something better. 
And sometimes you just have to wait. Amen. And if you can see it, you don't need faith to receive it. Amen, somebody. Come on, give the Lord a hand for you just for that. Amen. And I want you to know that God has some greatness for all of us. And just because you can't see it is the more proof that God is going to do something miraculous. All you have to do is believe. This, this, in Hebrews, it, it tells us that now faith is the substance of things. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm saying? Huh? Substance of things that I hope for, and it's the evidence of things that are not seen. My faith is what I stand on to believe that God going to do it, even though I don't know how he going to do it. Amen, somebody. And it was prophesied years ago in my life that I would be a preacher when I was young and dumb and doing foolish stuff. And I was the first one to say, I don't see that. But even though I didn't see it, I came to be it. And there's a whole lot of prophecies that have gone into your life and been spoken into your life, and some of them you've forgotten about. And you might even say it like I did. I don't see that. I can't see that. But God don't really need you to see it. He just needs you to believe it. He just needs you to believe it. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today that your word is always true. And we thank you, Lord, that even in the things that you've taken, you've never stopped loving us. You've never stopped blessing us. And, Lord, I ask now in Jesus' name that you would even forgive us now for all the times that we felt mistreated because we lost some things, even because some things were taken, some things that we really held dear, God. And to be honest with you, God, you know our hearts, and you know, God, that even sometimes we really faulted, and we really blame you to a degree to why you allowed this to happen, why you allowed this storm, why you allowed this suffering, God. But God, now we come to repent and say, God, we understand that sometimes you take things to, to give us things. You pluck things out of one hand and you, so that you can, we can make room to receive the bounty that you want to give us, God. So God, today our faith is rooted in knowing that what is coming is much greater than the things that we've lost. So Lord, we thank you today. And we receive it in Jesus' name.